Hello, future self. Welcome to Wednesday. It's Wednesday again. Um, I have to fly to Detroit tomorrow. So that means that I have to do a million things. One second while I get my list. I'm right here. Don't, don't feel abandoned, future self. I'm right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, my screen background is pink. That's why my face is super pink. Anyways, I'm leaving for a tour tomorrow. These are all the things that we got to get done. We have to finish editing video. We have to schedule videos and upload them. We have to pack a million billion things like clothes and laptops and video games and worms and snacks. And I am hoping if I can get all of my work stuff done and all of my packing done, I can also do the finishing of sewing of, of the two projects that I've been working on, the two recycled t-shirt stripey projects that were at the end of last week's video. So let's go physical. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood. I've only had like seven cups of tea, so. Look, tiny ninjas! Normal amount of views. Normal amount of views. Normal amount of views. Normal. Normal. What? Oh, right. It's because I put shaving my head in the title. I gotta stop doing that. Hi, future self. So. We have this problem where I need more space for clothes, so I'm going to move a bunch of clothes from my working closet upstairs down here into the studio closet. I am supposed to be packing for my trip tomorrow, but looking at the clothes in my closet and trying to make outfits means that I am now... Okay, I have to flip you around. Hold on. Bump, bump, bump. Nope. Slide bump. That I have to like go through all these clothes all of a sudden. And all so many. So many. And most of them I have made. And I don't know what to do with all of them. So I'm just going to move them downstairs. And then the ones that I like the most will slowly come back. It's the plan. Hello, future selves. Look, I made outfits. Uh, how do I put? I put you over here. You could be on this table, maybe. Yes. I'm up here. Let's go, camera. Hello. Hi. Made new outfits, which you cannot see at all because you're too not in the right positions. Outfits. Yeah. Recycled t-shirts and if you look down slightly, you can see that it is drop crotch onesie outfits. Mm. Real cute. I can't decide if it is for wearing to the conference. Or not, but let me show you the other one that I also made. Just gonna shoot into the mirror because you can't really see otherwise. But check me out. I got good colors. And I got a cool poof sleeve. Poof, 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 poof. 
Oh no, look real snazzy. Mm, I probably will wear this one. Maybe I'll wear this on the planes tomorrow. Plane! It's gonna be real cold there though, so I should wear something under it. Cause this is just recycled t-shirt material. Here, let's look at the backs. Oh yeah, so snazz. Look at that snazz. Mm, snazz! It's time for draft week from Anchorage. Uh -oh. said I this week. Uh, actually, it's not that bad. Okay. I tweeted all the things that I should have drafted. Okay. So, except for this one. If that was going to be my first ever gay sex dream, wow. I should have been sexier. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Mr. Steven takes M to the Bart so that they can go to the oh 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 camera I'm over here. Um excuse me, camera. Hi honey. So that I can go to the airport. Yeah, this is gonna be a real sighting and I don't want to because I don't like traveling and I'm real nervous, so <sighs> Go, baby. I'm on the plane. I brought a burrito and it got bomb tested by the TSA. Mm -hmm. I landed in Detroit. Um, I am now going to the Detroit Foundation Hotel. And there is no tram, so let's just walk a thousand miles in this airport and see what happens. Hello, future self, and welcome to my hotel room. Checking in was fun. Chase declined my card so I couldn't get a room, which I had to fix. And while it was getting fixed, I was inundated with photographers from the Detroit Fashion News um, because there was a fashion show happening in the building, which I did not expect when I was checking into a hotel. And uh, I... I, I think I ended up in someone's paper or something. More like on their Instagram. Uh, yeah, that was weird. I was in my airport clothes and they were like, oh my God, you look amazing. We must take pictures of you. So yeah, it was a lot. Um, <sighs> I'm just a little overwhelmed right now, but Fortunately, I have migraine drugs because that's about to happen. So let's take migraine drugs and then lay in bed and watch one day at a time because it's the bestest thing that ever happened to Netflix. Good morning, future self. Look, I found the Vi Humans. We are going to the Radical Exchange Conference to give our talk on data technology. Missing, I can't even remember what I titled it. Missing market for buying and selling data. It's very fancy. So yeah, we're gonna go do that. And then, and then we're gonna conference. And then we're gonna need the food. We need to be the food. But yeah, so far Detroit is a series of highways. That's all I've really seen and inside of one hotel and a fashion show does all the things. Okay, goodbye. And internet service providers have been given a green light to sell our browsing history to the highest advertorial bidder. Uh, that machine learning algorithm still can't see black people. It's a devastating consequence sometimes. 
and that Facebook is on a non-ending apology tour for the latest <laughs> democracy undermining offense out of that hellish shop. Um, the stream of bad news is showcasing the far-reaching impact of how our personal data is used and misused. Come in, come in, welcome. We're about to get started. Yeah. Is the time. Okay, let's go. All right, so I am by heart. They are M. Eifler. Uh, we both work at Microsoft in the office of the CTO with Jaron Lanier. And today we're going to be talking about data dignity. So I guess a lot of you have read uh, Radical Markets. And so Jaron Lanier and, and his previous work on data dignity was also a big inspiration for the chapter. Um, called in Radical Markets, but the chapter on data dignity in Radical Markets. So uh, Jaron is the common source here. Um, so we all know the current state of things. Everyone kind of exists here. All their data gets hoovered up by some large server, such as Facebook. And so there's like this tiny market for buying and selling data, but it's not very efficient. And there's basically no economic actions that most individuals can take around their data, including the action of maybe deciding not to sell their data. I'm not going to stick the whole talk here. But when the conference publishes their recording, I'll put it up on the new blog at theartofresearch.org. That's our new research blog. It's so exciting. The part of our talk that I do really want to remember is the question and answer period. What's the kind of um, barrier you see to implementing your type of work and why isn't that version of it more common? What do you, what do you idealize the difference that needs to happen? Well, a lot of it's just cultural. People are used to their data being taken for free. People don't realize that when they're doing the captures, like a lot of people here maybe realize that you're, you're working for Google, but most people aren't thinking about that and they just don't know. I watched all of the Facebook hearings um, in Congress and it's clear that lawmakers and their constituents don't understand um, how this system works. So yeah, once people demand to get paid for their work, that's the biggest difference. And the, 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 the part is that like you're being given something for free, I'm going to now give up the thing I've had for free for a long time, feels like, uh, uh, uh. Sure. It's, it, but that's like a hard thing to do. I mean, I this might sound extreme, but I kind of compare it to breaking with white um, solidarity. The, the part where you like have to step away from white solidarity and like shiver in the cold by yourself while that you, you feel it feels like a thing. It feels like a really hard social thing. So to break people out of something that and data is not just like, you know, me messing around on my phone. Data is all of my friends and data is my family and data is like all the books I read on overdrive. Like data is a lot of social stuff that we have to change and it, it is going to hurt. Uh, two things. Three things. This is cool. Thank you. <laughs> the idea that giving up free emails, like giving up white solidarity, run with that. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Very real. Too real, I suspect, for many. And that's why you need to do it. Um, and then the third is this is, seems focused, I came in part way, on individual remuneration. And have you thought about a collective pot? Uh, one might call it like a fund or like taxes. Essentially, like <laughs> we, we need money for stuff as a as a city, as a nation, as a species, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of value, but it's accruing to these like handful of platforms. Mm -hmm. And maybe the in-between step is less about the technical capacity, but who is on the other end of that payment? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a collective version of us rather than individual. Yes. And that simplifies the end in the one over end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I'd be happy to contribute some of my data if it meant that I could pour it into the San Francisco's bar is not horrible all the time. <laughs> problem. Like, <laughs> and you could also actually very quickly co create national legislation if you mention taxes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's a crazy idea. Idea. I live in Washington, D.C. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hopefully, now that there's some conversations happening with actual legislative bodies around this stuff, maybe yeah. they will have good ideas about that. I, I just want to add something about it. Hi, future self. Um, that, oh, sorry, I can't put down, put down, brain, put down. Um, today went really good. We did our talk, and everybody was very engaged and asked very many good questions. 
and it was packed to the gills. There were tons of people in the room and it went good. Uh, so I'm glad that that is over. The stress of it is done and now we can just enjoy, enjoy the conference and play vigil games till 12.30 in the morning, which is what we just did. We played vigil games till 12.30 in the morning. <laughs> Too fresh. Toofs. Oh, my face is getting toofed. <laughs> oh. So, tomorrow we don't have to worry about giving talks or anything. It's the best. And now I have to go to sleep. Okay, goodbye. Do, 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 do. Bra oh, I'm not good at turning the camera around yet. Hello, future self. It is the morning of a Saturday, I think. Yeah. Last night was dumb because it was 1 30 in the morning, and so sleep in my brain is like, let's panic about money. Because panicking about money is always the best activity. <laughs> ah, brains are dumb. Um, we got lots of rave reviews about our talk yesterday. So that was good. We did good jobs. And now I just have to go to a conference and talk to people. And that should be less stressful and not give you panics. But my brain likes to throw a wrench and things so good morning hopefully i will get lots of videos of very pretty buildings because there's very many pretty buildings here so. uh. hey future yourself so i don't think i told you this story yesterday um there was a panel about a movie with a director and an economist and they were talking about money essentially um Mm, think brains. And there was a scene in this movie. Um, I think it's called Sorry to Bother You. Uh, Boots Riley, the director. Um, in which there is a female performance artist stereotype. Uh... I didn't like too much. I also didn't really like the way they were talking about art and what makes it succeed or fail, mostly being whether or not it was attached to a political movement. If it was attached to a political movement, therefore, it was a success. And I thought that was not true. So I made a comment. And then tons of people said, I really liked your comment. And that just made me suspicious. Because praise from strangers makes me super suspicious. I don't know why. I guess I'm just that weirdo. And then the best thing of the whole day happened, which is that we got to go to this place called the Turkey Grill. And it was like 0.7 miles away from where the conference was being held. And we had to walk. And Detroit is definitely not a walking city, but that's okay. Cause we got to go to this bright orange building. <laughs> <laughs> and inside it was um it was definitely not a place where you were supposed to like eat in the restaurant but it was this, like beautiful gold like turmeric yellow color and we were the only white people there which is always my favorite restaurants i figure food is better when there are not very many white people around um and we got so we found this place because i asked our lyft driver for a recommendation for something in the area that was delicious and she recommended Cajun, uh, Cajun fried turkey wings. And so that is what we got. And it was so delicious. And we walked it all the way back to the conference, ate it at the conference table while everyone else had to eat boring conference food. And I was very excited. And it was so 
delicious. I'd never had a fried turkey wing before. And the fat was all perfect. And it was like, mm, oh God, it was so good. It was, it was like eating a chicken wing, but on like, it was just like so much more intense of an experience, but not like a drumstick on a turkey, which is like so huge. I don't know. It was just, it was real good. I liked it. Nom. Oh my god, it's so good. Oh, I haven't touched the... What is this one? These ones are the, the carnivorous plant. Do not touch all the other things. Nope, 4K. Okay, people are done talking now. We're at the last day. Oh, look, I found the humans. We're at the last day of the conference. And there have been very many things. And yeah, I just wanted to say hi because I know I haven't been talking to you very much. Can and I didn't want you to be it? lonely. No. Stop looking at me. Stop looking at me. No. Ugh. Oh, you do love me, don't you? <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Is it tracking now? Oh, yeah. Oh, nope. Come on. My lips aren't that chapped. I still look like a face. <laughs> Ooh, what do I mean? Oh, it's it, it definitely stays with the first Long human. Down. Log on, log on, log on. Subject louse. Hey, that was rude! You're a very rude little robots. Whatever. Oh, uh, little old me? You're tracking little old me using your datas? Nope. No 4K for you! Hi, future self. I'm walking by what I believe is a community garden. I just finished the conference, so I went to the airport, and I now have one day to look about and see an arts tomorrow.
Why, hello. I have taken to my room to rest. Um, tomorrow it turns out the Diego Rivera mural is closed. <laughs> so I will not get to see it on this trip. However, the Heidelberg project is open and we are going to go see all the beautiful street art um, after maybe buying a fanny pack at Simplified. It's my plan. I don't know if it will happen, but in the meantime, we have arts to make. You and me, arts, arts, arts. Let's do them. I'm lighting this with my phone because it's very dark in here. So I am going to put you down, tiny thing. I used my makeup tag, water-based body art makeup I've been using for about a year now. I've never actually used it to paint not on my body. Um, but Vi went home, so I'm just in this hotel room by myself. Living my by myself life. So I'm just gonna put these all here. So many paintings happened. So many. Ooh, stretchy. Oh. They dry pretty fast, which is nice. I guess they're pretty, it is actually pretty similar to watercolor. But I'm gonna leave them on the floor for the evenings and then put them into my. Did, can you not see me no more, honey? Can you not see me? Your battery is dying, huh? I'm gonna put them into my notebook once they are dry. Let's flip you around to do three at once so that we can stop recording before your battery is completely dead. Making arts all by myself. Making arts all by myself. Hello, welcome to a new day, self. I'm about to overdub you past self talking because the audio quality is terrible. Let's go. Good morning, future self. So I am way out in the neighborhoods in, uh, in Detroit at Project Heidelberg. I can't remember the name exactly. And it's sort of a impromptu junk art area and I'm gonna take a little tour. I'm definitely the only person here. The hotel seemed slightly reticent that they didn't know where it was or what it was. It doesn't seem like something they're sending tourists to a lot, but let's wander around and see some street art. I guess the thing that keeps coming into my head is that, you know, it's a, it's an expression of desolation, but it's also expressive desolation. It uses all these materials of, of the blight. To sort of claim ground, I guess. There's lots of tires. This is Detroit. It's a car city. This is not a very walkable place. And instead of... Here, let me turn you around. Instead of the graves of the past being 
marked by crosses, there are all these tires. Tires on sticks. Like crosses pounded into the ground among regular graves. It's beautiful and it's sad. I spent most of my trip um, in downtown and midtown, which have both been aggressively redeveloped. But none of that energy or money has really reached out into the neighborhoods. And that's why things like the Heidelberg, Heidelberg Project exist is to try and bring some of that energy back into the neighborhood. So from the Heidelberg project, it's about two miles to downtown, maybe a little under. So I decided I would walk back This was gonna be a view of Detroit I would never have seen from a car. I would never have experienced um, sort of looking at a tourist guide for what I was, you know, what I should see, what I shouldn't see. And there is certainly a lot of broken windows and trash laying around. The CVS is closed and the parking lot is empty. The sidewalks are covered in gravel kicked up from the streets. There are all these lots where there's just empty building, but there's also art everywhere. Amazing murals, and once you get downtown, these alleyways where artists have installed uh, a lot of different street art. Some of the street art here too, has, it sort of balances between super colorful and um, using desolation as a material in the work. I really love these collaged graffiti comic book pieces and this sort of lost um, ethereal desert. And there's a lot of things in Detroit like this that I felt like I just sort of just happened upon. Uh, get yours, shine on, take flight, homie. It's this combination of hyper concentrated um, energetic reimaginings of the city, like this alleyway. Um, after a long walk on a road on which I saw no one else walking. And then I waited at the Detroit airport for forever while my plane was delayed and flew back home. It was a five hour flight and I got pretty airsick, but you know, these are, these are the things of, of being disabled. You just get sick on every flight you are ever on. Yay! This, this puppy dog right here licked off every single one of my faces as soon as I walked in the door. Oh, hi Lolo. Look, there's a kiddo. Kiddo.
It was a five hour flight and we got delayed an hour and about three and a half or th no about three hours into the flight it started throwing up and then I drank some water and then I threw it up and then I drank some water and then I threw it up and then I drank some water and then I threw it up. Uh, for about an hour. Um, but then I got home. Oh. So things I'm learning about traveling are that leaving somewhere, uh, getting on a plane at noon is better than getting on a plane at 8 p.m. after you did things all day. Because uh, coming back was twice as hard as going. Yeah, so, bye future self.